So if you're a bartender or a cocktail aficionado that likes making cocktails at home, you probably have heard of David Wondrich. If you haven't, keep watching this video to find out who he is. Hey guys, welcome back. So a few years ago, a book came out called Imbibe by a cocktail historian called David Wondrich. Uh, once again, this was uh, probably even a bigger game, game changer in the cocktail industry than uh, Liquid Intelligence by Dave Arnold, which I love that book as well. Um, he just pretty much debunked a lot of the myths about classic cocktails, the history of them and so forth. And uh, he's also got a podcast called Life Behind Bars. I love listening to him and Noah Rothbaum. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite podcasts to do with cocktails, as well as Living Proof, made here in Adelaide in Australia. And if you're wondering, Life Behind Bars, as my uh, video editor and film daughter asked, why is it called Life Behind Bars? Get it? Behind bars, not, ac not actually jail. Um, I really wish I thought about that name. That's got the best uh, cocktail podcast name ever. Well done, guys. So apart from knowing everything about cocktails and the history of them, he uh, actually knows how to make a few great cocktails too. So today I wanted to make three of Dave Wondrich's cocktails. And the first one that I'm going to do is the Gotham Cocktail. This was created by Dave in 2001, and it was for the debut issue of New York's Gotham Magazine. And the first ingredient he calls for is 60 mils of cognac. I'm going to use the Cavorsier VSOP. Next up he calls for 30 mils of a dry vermouth. Uh, he used the Noily Pratt. Unfortunately, uh, we're out of Noily Pratt at the moment. Stock order comes tomorrow. So I'm going to use the Dolan Dry. Next up, 15 mils of creme de cassis. I'm using the Joseph Catrone. And last but not least, a bar spoon of lemon juice. Add some ice to that. Now normally any cocktail that has lemon juice in it I would shake, but being that it's only a bar spoon I think stirring is really good too. Oh, smells good. I know I'm going to like this one already. This is the first time I'm going to try it. Really nice colour there too. And just like me, he likes to use a simple garnish. I'm going to do a lemon twist. And that's the Gotham cocktail. Let's give it a try. Yeah, well. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, really well balanced. I'd never heard of this one until I did a bit of research. I'm so glad that I have used this one. Um, yeah, the, the cognac really, really nicely with the, the creme de cassis and the dry vermouth. Uh, I really like that little bit of the lemon juice is brilliant because it sort of just makes it, just a little bit of that acidity makes that drink pop as well. I could just about put this on, on the menu here at the 18th Amendment. So, uh, great drink, David. Cocktail number two for Dave Wondrich is a drink or a cocktail called Whiskey. W-E-E-S-K-I. So apparently he had some Irish whiskey and he believed that sweet vermouth didn't work too well with Irish whiskey, so he subbed out uh, the sweet vermouth with a Lille Blanc, add a little bit of Cointreau to it as well, and it's a bit of a winner. So the first ingredient it calls for is 60 mils of Irish whiskey. I'm going to use the Slain, because I think that's going to work really well. Especially with the nice flavour that the Slain gives with the three different casks that it's matured in. Next up, 
30 mils of Lille Blanc, which is a French aromatized wine, I guess is the best way to describe it. Five mils of Cointreau, or a triple sec. I really like Cointreau. And last but not least, a couple dashes of orange bitters. As you all know, I use Gaz's, uh, Gaz Regan's orange bitters. He's also a great friend of Dave Wondrich. Uh, yeah, works really well in this cocktail. That's some ice. And let's give it a stir. So guys, if you like these videos, please like, subscribe. I know I'm turning into a bit of a, what would you call it? I'm being a bit, please subscribe all the time in my videos, but we are trying to hit that thousand. Uh, just to be nice to say we've got a thousand subscribers. But thank you to all of you who have been watching. We just went past our 37,000 views, which is incredible. This became something to do during lockdown here with COVID in Australia. And it's something that we're gonna continue because I love doing it. Especially when I get to try all these amazing drinks and share them with you. Oh, okay. Dave, once again, the lemon twist like me. <laughs> love just a twist. Simple, classic, easy. All right, whiskey. Once again, beautiful. Oh, that's a really, really good drink too. A lot of booze in there, but so well balanced. I'm gonna have another sip. The slime really works well with the Lille. Uh, the Cointreau just adds that little bit of sweetness. The orange bitters, uh, the backbone. Guys, I love using bitters in everything pretty much. It's like your salt and pepper. It's, it's like seasoning uh, your cocktail. And Gaz Regan's bitters is uh, one of those great ones. Angostura, you know there's so many different types of bitters out there. Um, yeah, look, really, really good drink. And did I mention the book Imbibe and Punch? Go out and, uh, and buy it, because it's a really good book. Cocktail number three, last but not least, is a drink called the Puna Club, P-O-O-N-A. Dave, I think you have a little bit of a dirty mind like I do. Uh, apparently it was just uh, created as a fictitious British sort of club, similar to the Pigu Club, but apparently there is a Puna Club in India. This was created by Dave for the fatty crab in Manhattan. And the first ingredient that it calls for is 45 mils or ounce and a half of Tanqueray Rangpur. Great gin, by the way. Has those Rangpur limes as a botanical. Next up, three quarters of an ounce of sweet vermouth about 22 and a half, I think, meals for here for Australia. Three quarters of an ounce or 22 and a half meals of blood orange juice. And then a dash or a couple in this little container of Regan's orange bitters, followed by a dash or a couple of these little ones of Angostura bitters. I'm gonna add some ice and give this a shake. I'm going to double strain into a chilled cocktail glass. I'm using the Nick and Nora glass for this one. Look at that beautiful color. The color sort of reminds me a little bit of a blood and sand. Okay, uh, I'm going to use for the garnish just a twist of a blood orange. Just over the top and around. The Puna cocktail. Oh wow, that's so easy, refreshing. 
Mm. Yeah, the gin, the blood orange juice, sweet vermouth, ties it really nicely together. Definitely needed those bitters to it. Another great job. Uh, guys, look, like, subscribe, check out Life Behind Bars. Uh, awesome podcast with a great name as i said before and uh once again guys i don't you know i'm not endorsed by dave or his books or their podcast but uh, if you really want to be a serious bartender this is what you need to read imbibe punch the guys are also on the daily beast uh, with noah uh, anyway check out life behind bars you're gonna learn so much cool stuff see you again guys on let's talk drinks